Hi everyone, welcome back. Today is such a good day because I just got part of my Sephora order from online and then I also have what I picked up in store from the savings event and I am just, I'm just giddy. I'm just giddy to try these things. I cannot wait. I've literally been watching the window for the UPS man to come because I knew my Sephora package was coming today. So today we're going to do a haul and a try on. Some of these things I won't be able to try everything that I got. Most of it I should in this video, but we're probably going to do a try and make up one and two like in two different parts because I have a lot of stuff and I have some stuff I've gotten in PR recently. So expect probably two of these videos here in the next few days. If you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty content here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I hope you'll stick around, subscribe, and let's get into it. All right, let me clip my hair out of my face. Let's get into what I got from the sale. So I went on Friday, the first day of the sale. I went, I got there pretty early, like right when they opened and just kind of took my time and just browsed around. I haven't been in Sephora in like almost two months and it was just the best time. But let's talk about what I got. So the first thing is actually this, and this was not on my wish list really, although this is something I've wanted for a while. So I just decided to try it. These are the Summer Fridays Mineral Milk SPF. It's SPF 30 and it's all mineral sunscreen. So I love a lot of Korean SPFs. I love my Skin 1004, the Madagascar Centella. That's my absolute favorite, but I don't have a favorite like mineral sunscreen for my face. And I know these are really popular for under makeup. I've seen Andrea Ali here on YouTube use these and I've said it many times, but that woman could talk me into buying just about anything at this point. I think she is just the most stunning human ever. But these are the shade drops. So I'm going to shake them up really quick. It is kind of risky to use a new sunscreen with a bunch of new makeup, but we're going to do it anyways. Oh, okay. So it's a nice, really thin consistency. Oh, yeah. So this is extremely thin and watery, which I like. It kind of looks like it's going to have a tint at first, but it really doesn't. It's clear or it's not clear, but it's, it blends in to nothing. I'm going to get a little bit more and start applying to my neck also because you're supposed to bring your SPF down your neck. This is your friendly reminder. All right, so that feels really, really good. It's already like set down on my skin, which is really nice. One thing I'm noticing that I really like about this, just based on first impression, is it does give my skin a glow, like you can see. It definitely gives me some radiance to my skin without being like a overly glowy SPF. I do find that sometimes with SPFs is they are either extremely glowy on your skin or you know there are more mattifying SPFs like the Unseen sunscreen from Supergoop. Sometimes I want something right in between and that is what this is giving me. So also like it's fragrance free. That is amazing. It doesn't have a super strong smell either. So far so good with this. We'll see how makeup does over the top, but I'm impressed so far. All right, let's move into foundation. Typically I do corrector first, but I don't have a new corrector that I bought. So we're gonna go into foundation and this is what I'm so freaking excited about. I did buy one in store and then I ordered the infamous. Prada foundation. I have been wanting this since it came out. I'm actually really impressed with myself that I waited this long because I wanted this so bad. I just, I love it. I've kind of mentioned before, I have this fascination with Prada and I'm not really sure why. I, like I love just everything about it. I love the branding. I love Prada bags, like the classic black nylon bags. I really want one. So I don't know. 
I'm just, I'm very into the Prada aesthetic. And I mean, I already pulled this out when I opened the box just to look at it. I mean, look at this beauty. Oh my goodness. I just, like, I don't even want to put this away. I feel like this needs to just sit, you know? So this feels super heavy. I do know it is refillable yeah so this is the heavy part the actual refill this is plastic but it's still pretty to look at and I mean it, it looks and feels really nice still so I went with the shade LN 15 which I swatched it when I opened the box and I think this is gonna be a spot-on shade match I think so let's hope that it is yeah i think this is going to be a spot on shade match so this is the shade ln 15. yeah it feels really nice very light thin before we apply this i want to show you the other complexion product that i did pick up this was actually not really i'd heard about it but i didn't plan to buy this until I saw it in person and I don't know, I, I thought it looked kind of nice. So I did get the new Ilia Skin Rewind Complexion Stick. So this is their new stick foundation and it looks like this. You've probably seen it. It does have this really interesting packaging that has like a thumb, like indentation right here, which I thought was kind of different. And I went with this because I swatched them in store and I was just pretty impressed with the swatches it felt really nice and I figured we would try it so this is the shade that I got right here this is the shade 9 in I think when I'm not self tanned it might be slightly dark but I bought it to have something that is a little bit deeper than my fairest color so that's why I bought this. If I didn't want that, I was gonna get six in, which I think for my natural skin tone, that would probably be the best one. But I went with nine just cause I wanted something just a tad bit darker. But we're not gonna try that one today. You know we gotta try this Prada foundation because I'm dying. I'm gonna be quiet now so we can try this. All right, so I have one pump on my hand here. So it is kind of runny, but it's not like extremely runny. Now I had a really hard time picking a shade personally online. The swatches, I don't know. I just kind of had a hard time deciding. Let's apply. I feel like this is probably the foundation I hear the most about right now in terms of something to recommend for the Sephora sale. Okay. Yeah. That's a spot on shade match. And um, my last few videos, I'd mentioned that I had on some self tan. Most of it has kind of um, worn away now. I did exfoliate most of it off yesterday. I haven't redone it because I wanted to see what this foundation looked like with my more fair skin tone. So I would know if it's a good match. And I think that it is. So yeah, this is blending in really, really easily. I'm guessing maybe for self tan, I would go to LN25 or maybe even medium 30, I think is what it is. So I don't know about that, but I wanted to try like my actual skin tone first. And then if I do end up really loving this, then maybe I'll buy another shade. But. Okay, so it is blending in beautifully, very easy. All right, so here is one pump blended all over my face. First impressions. First thing I wanna say is it does have a slight fragrance, but it's very mild. It's not anything super overpowering, like nothing even close to some of the other more luxury foundations, like the Gucci products, for example. Those are very, very fragranced. This does have like a very slight floral fragrance, but it's not overpowering by any means. So I did just want to put that out there. This is an absolutely stunning finish. I have seen, I think they claim this to be a matte foundation, but I, 
I would say this is more of like a natural finish on my skin right now at least. I don't think it's super matte, but I don't think it's like a dewy looking foundation either. I think it falls right in between, which is my favorite. If I was choosing, that is the finish that I love most in foundations. If you're new to my channel, I have very normal skin, so I don't really lean oily or dry. Sometimes in the summertime, I can get a little bit oily like in the T-zone, but typically I would say my skin is pretty normal. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit more. This is probably like half a pump because I just wanna see how buildable it is. I will say I could not have gone lighter than this, I don't think. So if you are around my skin tone and you're trying to figure out what shade to get, I would say definitely don't go lighter than this. Um, I know Martina, Martina Lily, she has LN10 and I know she said that it was a little bit light for her. So this is one up from there, LN15. So just keep that in mind. Honestly, I could probably make LN25 work right now, but this is fine because we'll add bronzer and all of those things. But if you use me as a shade reference, I would say don't go any lighter than this one. In terms of the coverage, I would say solid medium coverage on this, um, especially now with adding a little bit of additional product. But I mean, so far it's looking beautiful. All right, let's move into concealer. I did just apply some corrector. I use my Huda Beauty in Cherry Blossom because if you're new around here, I always use color corrector under my eyes no matter what. But let's move into concealer. So I did get two concealers. One of them is new and one of them uh, is not. So the first one is not brand brand new, but I did get the Fenty We're Even Hydrating Longwear Concealer. I wanted to get this when it came out, but I couldn't decide on the shade and I ended up just not getting it. But I know Martina and a lot of my other favorite creators here on YouTube, Nikki LaRose loves this concealer. So I was feeling left out and <laughs> I really wanted to try it. So I got the shade 200C. Now, I had trouble with this concealer as well. I found the lighter shades as in below 200. So this is 200C. So any shade below this I found looked a little bit too light, like lighter than what I like for a concealer. So that's why I went with this shade, but I, I kind of had trouble picking to be honest. So we'll see how this works. So this is shade 200C. So I don't know, if I end up really liking it, maybe I would get one of the lighter shades and then I could mix them maybe. I don't know, but we'll have to see. But the other concealer, you all really wanted to see me try this one, the new one from Say. This is the Slip Tint Radiant All Over Concealer. Now, I gotta talk to you about the shade range on this. And I don't know if it's just me, but I went over to this concealer multiple times. I was in Sephora for a while, okay? I was making laughs like all around and I kept going back to this concealer because I thought maybe I was seeing things because I was just so excited to be in store. But okay, shade one through three to me, unless it was the Sephora lighting because Sephora lighting, is very iffy as you probably know but shade one through three were extremely fair extremely fair like more fair than i would want for an under eye concealer then when you got to shade four it wasn't quite as fair but it was really yellow and i don't love a super yellow concealer so i thought okay shade five has to be it so that's what i went for but I feel like this looks dark to be considered a light skin tone and that's how they describe this one is light with peachy undertones which okay I don't think this looks peachy at all you tell me what you think but I don't think this looks peachy okay this is supposed to be light with peach undertones now does that look peachy to you because that looks yellow to me 
and it looks darker than this Fenty concealer. And I think this is supposed to be a light medium shade. I am really glad I went in store and looked because I was actually gonna order this concealer and I was gonna order the shade six. Well, the shade six was way too dark and that was supposed to be a light with neutral undertones. So I find the shades on this to be a little bit iffy. So if you are around my skin tone or you're unsure and you're a light, light, medium skin tone, I would say maybe go in store and look before you order because I don't know, maybe it's just me, but the shade seemed off in my opinion. So which one should we use? Cause I feel like the say one is gonna be way too dark for this foundation. Now it will probably work once I have self tan on, but I do not at the moment. Decisions, decisions. I think we're gonna keep, we'll hold on to the say one. I promise this is coming in the next video. We will use this, but I feel like this is gonna be too dark for right now. So let's go in with the Fenty this time. I promise we will use the Say one. And let's just give this a whirl. So I'm gonna put that here. I like the consistency of this concealer. It's very thin, feels very hydrating. Honestly, the consistency kind of reminds me of the Tower 28 concealer. I'm gonna use a clean FO3 from Sigma to blend this out. Let me know if you've tried the Fenty concealer. What do you think of it? Do you like it? Let me know. I know Martina, like I was saying earlier, really likes it. It was in her recommendations video. Okay, I think the shade is actually okay. If you're new to my channel, I don't love a really bright light under eye on myself. I just don't find it it is that flattering on me personally. That's just not my preference. So I don't usually go for super brightening shades. So that's why I was a little bit worried about this one because I think this is supposed to be more of a light medium skin tone. And right now without any self tan or anything, I would say I'm definitely like a true light skin tone, but I think we're okay with this one. All right, I went ahead and applied a little bit everywhere else. So hopefully the shade, well, we can kind of even out the whole face. Okay, so I'm gonna blend this little bit on my chin and then I did add a little bit to my nose right here. Yeah, I just had the best time in Sephora the other day. I just, you know, when you haven't been in a while and there's all these new launches that you haven't seen, it's just, and you're a makeup lover, it's just like, pure bliss when you walk into Sephora. I know some of you know exactly what I mean. So I had just the best time. So you definitely have a good bit of play time with this formula. You don't have to blend it right away. It's not one that seems to dry down super quick. All right, this looks really good. Better than I was thinking. I really like this. Really, really like this so far. I love the shade. I think I picked a good one. And it looks really pretty and nice under my eyes. It still looks pretty wet, I would say, under my eyes. So I don't think it's one that's going to set down, I would assume. We'll give it a little bit more time and see. But it's definitely pretty hydrating looking still under my eyes, but it looks smooth and coverage is pretty good as well. So I'm very, very happy with this. I promise those of you that want to see the say one, I promise this, this is coming next, but I think this one is the best match for that foundation for right now. Let's move into what I picked up next. So again, I'm in a little bit of a dilemma. Well, let's just start with this. So I got this and this was influenced by so many of you. I did a live a few nights ago with Martina and we were talking about our Sephora recommendations. We actually did two lives. So we did a part one and a part two. In the part two that's on my channel, I will link it in the description box if you haven't seen it. But we were talking about this product, the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Contour Duo. Now, this is a product that has been on my list forever. It's been on my loves list for years, years. And I always almost buy it and then the price 
stops me every time, which is so funny because, I mean, I spend a lot of money on makeup, so I'm not usually that phased by prices, but for some reason, I just always thought, oh, that, I don't need that. Like, that's too much for a bronzer, but so many of you were adamant that I needed this. I needed to try this, so I listened. I listened to you, and I cannot wait. So this is the shade Intensity One. So if you're not familiar with this, you get a cream bronzer and a cream highlight in here. I don't even wanna mess it up because look how pretty that looks. But I have this, but I also have another product that has a bronzer in it. Before I show you, do you know what product I got? I swore I was not gonna buy this product, you guys, swore. And then I saw it in person, I swatched it, and here we are. This freaking Natasha Denona Hyper Natural Face Palette. I held off on buying this when it came out because the truth is I don't use my face palettes. Did that stop me from buying this one? No, it did not. It did the first time around when it released, but then I saw it in person and I swatched everything in here and I just loved I, I just loved it I couldn't leave without it so we do have bronzers in here so I'm trying to decide if I want to use both or if I just want to use one in this video and save the other one for the other video because sometimes I feel like when it's your first time trying something you can't really tell what's what you know so I'm torn I think we're gonna use this I really want to use this We'll use Tom Ford in the next video, I promise. But I did wanna at least show you the stuff that I got, even though I can't use it all. I could, but I'm not going to. So I did get the Tom Ford. All of you are to blame because you all told me that I needed it. So we're gonna use this and we'll use the bronzer and the blushes in here. But before we do that, I'm gonna set my face and I did get a new powder. So the powder, that I got is new from Laura Mercier. This is the translucent pressed setting powder, the ultra blur version. So they do make the loose version of this. I know Martina loves the loose version and I'm pretty sure she was buying this too because she wanted to try it. But I decided to pick this up because I honestly, if I had to pick, I love a pressed powder more than a loose powder. And I feel like I don't have like my perfect pressed powder that's really blurring from Sephora. I do have my Kosas Cloud Set powder, which I love and adore, but I wouldn't describe that as a super blurring powder. So I wanted to try this and I got the translucent color. I think there's um, three colors maybe. Okay, so I looked it up on Sephora. It comes in translucent, which is the one that I bought. It comes in a honey color, which is more of like a yellowy, medium-ish skin tone, and then it comes in a medium deep as well. I also noticed that this says limited edition. I don't know why they would make this limited edition, but it does say that. Okay, so I'm gonna use this Sigma F12 brush, and I'm gonna lightly set my whole face with this powder. Okay. Yeah, I see the blurring on this powder like right away. You see that? See that side and then this side? Big difference. I'm kind of going in like right here first because that's where I have majority of the pores on my face that I notice. That's kind of where they are. So. I like to kind of focus my powdering there. Okay, that looks very nice, very, very nice. Let me look up close. Yeah, it looks really, really good on my skin. I don't, I never know if powders pick up that well on camera, but I can see the biggest difference like right here where I applied that. Very, very promising so far. I think I might actually take a little small brush here and I'm gonna just lightly kind of set that concealer because we're gonna do eyes in a minute but um, I just want to make sure there's no fallout that gets stuck down there if we do have any so I'm gonna use 
this again. I will say I don't love like packaging like this. So this comes up and then it has this little powder puff in here, which I, I never really use, but it's there if you wanted it. But I don't really like it when powders like flip like this. I don't know why. So I'm using the N14 from Nikki LaRose and BK Beauty, and I'm just gonna lightly set my under eyes with this. I am very, very picky about powders under my eyes, so I do wanna try this and see what I think, but I'm using just a little tiny bit. So we will see. I don't give a ton of powders my stamp of approval for under the eyes, typically. I don't know if this is gonna pick up, but I am not trying to be dramatic at all, but my under eyes look absolutely flawless right now. Like smooth, flawless. I mean, are you seeing this? I hope it comes up on the camera. I don't know if it's the powder, the concealer, or the combination with the corrector, I don't know, but they look really, really good right now. Let's move into this palette that I did not need did not need because I do not use my face palettes. But something about this one just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't, I just could not not get this. I could not help it. I swatched it. These powders felt absolutely incredible. The shadows and the blush and the bronzer. I, yeah, the, the formula on these just felt so good. So, so good. Let's swatch these bronzers again. Cause I swatched them in store and I just loved the finish. So I've seen a ton of reviews on this palette and it seems kind of 50-50 kind of honestly. I feel like a lot of people like it and a lot of people don't. So the light color, the medium and the dark, obviously the light is extremely light, which I think, or I get that's where a lot of the criticism that I've seen is coming from the fact that there's only one of these. I agree. I mean, I don't think I haven't even used it, but I don't know that this is an actual universal palette, but let me just use it before <laughs> I give you my opinion. So we're going to go into the bronzers and I'm just going to mix a little bit of all three because that's probably how I would use this anyway. And I don't know because these pans are so small. I don't know how well you could really like just go into one shade either because the pans are just tiny, but I'm using the Refer 05 to apply this. Okay, mixed together, very pretty, very, very pretty. And I'm just, I'm literally just kind of dunking in all three colors, but yeah, I don't know about this being universal. So the powders are, I mean, they are applying so beautifully, like smooth, just nice, just nice. I mean, I kind of knew it when I swatched them in stores, but obviously it's, you can't really say until you apply something to your face, but I mean, they just look really pretty and natural on the skin. I've never felt a powder quite like this. I don't even really know how to describe it, to be honest, but it's very blurring and just buttery smooth. I hate to use the word buttery because I know a lot of people hate it when people say that, but that's truly what it feels like and what it looks like. Liking the bronzer so far. All right, let's do the blushes. I'm gonna use my Smashbox Buildable Cheek Brush and I'm gonna, well, let me swatch the blushes first. I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm excited. So there's the blushes on my fingers. So there is the light pink and the brighter pink. I think they call this a peach actually, but that looks really pink to me. And then obviously that light pink is very, very light. So I'm assuming most days I would mix them, but I'm gonna go into the light one first because I wanna see 
what this looks like on its own. So it is very pretty, just a extremely pale pink, extremely pale. So if you, yeah, if you are much darker than me, I would say that color on its own is probably not going to show up much on you. I mean, I know this is meant to be more of a natural palette, and so far it definitely is, but um, that blush is very light. So once you add a good bit of it, I mean, you can definitely see it on my skin. It's just very, very subtle. So I would probably on most days mix it, like I said, but let's go in with a little bit of the darker pink. Oops, got a little bit of clinging right there. I must have not set that area very well. Yeah, love that brighter pink. And again, I didn't use much, but really nice. Really, really nice. They have this beautiful, I hesitate to even call it a sheen because I feel like that makes it seem like it's glowy or glittery or shimmery. It's none of those things. It just has this skin-like finish. Just ever so slightly, just a little bit of a sheen. I know that's not a great description, but it's kind of hard to explain it because I've not used anything like this before. Next, okay, here's a random product that I bought. This is not makeup, but I repurchased this, the Donna Karen Cashmere Mist Deodorant. I have used this in the past and I loved it. I didn't buy it again because it is on the pricey side and you know, sometimes I think, do I really need to spend that on a deodorant? Probably not, but I love this and I'm so tired of being without this. I've tried four different more natural deodorants in the past few months and I hated all four of them. They didn't work. I, I just hated them and I was in line checking out and I saw this and I just decided, you know what, I love this product and it smells good. So I'm buying it again, because I love it. So I did pick that up, but I also got um, actually two highlighters, which is not something that I buy that often, but this one really got me when I saw it in person. So this is the Sephora Luminizer. This is from the Sephora collection. And I, I think it was, Melissa Herkman, which is, she's one of my favorite makeup artists. She's not on YouTube, but she is on Instagram. She has been talking about these for a long time, or not a long time, but since they were released. And I, she's another one that I will buy anything that she says to. So she has been raving about these new highlighters from Sephora Collection. And this shade in Sparkling Honey, when I swatched it, I just, I just, the color, it's like a beautiful nude, like light nude highlighter. And I swatched it in store and I just, I just loved it. So it came home with me. So that is it there. Hopefully you can see that. I will try to insert a more close up swatch too so you can see it. But these really reminded me and felt like the new Fenty highlighters, which I almost bought one of those, but I decided to go with this instead because, I don't know, just something about this just really spoke to me in store, but the texture of it and the look when I swatched it kind of felt like the new Fenty ones. Maybe they're not, I don't know, but to me, they kind of felt like it. And then the other thing, now I really tried to talk myself out of this and now I'm kind of kicking myself because I, I feel like I got maybe the wrong shade in this. But I did get one of these Dior Forever Glow Maximizers. I, I swore I was not going to buy one of these because I, first of all, I don't use liquid highlight all the time. And I don't know, I just didn't feel like I needed one of these. But then I saw it in person and I was like, Ugh, now maybe I do. <laughs> maybe I do want one of those. So I got the pink shade, but I saw online... There's another shade that is called Nude that I wish 
I would have known about because they did not have that color in store, but they have it online. So now I'm kind of wishing I got the nude color instead of the pink, but that is the pink shade. Now, again, did I need that? Absolutely not, but I don't know. Now I'm looking at the pink and I'm like, okay, but the pink is also really pretty. Okay, since we've powdered, this is gonna be probably not the best thing to do, but I really wanna use this. So we're just gonna go right over the powder and just see how this works. I'm gonna blend with a clean 109 from BK Beauty and just tap that in and we'll see Ooh. We'll see how it looks over powder because we've got powder blush, powder bronzer, and um, we powdered our whole face, obviously. Ooh. Let's look up close here. Okay, that applied absolutely beautifully over powder. Like no pickup, no weird patchiness. Mmm. All right, I'm not regretting this purchase now. Let's do the other side. That looks way better than I thought it was going to. If you can apply a liquid highlight over powder, then that's a very good sign. Oh yeah, so that is, ooh. So I have the Rare Beauty highlighter in Enchant which I think is a similar color. Actually, I'll go grab it in a minute so you can see the difference. But that's why I was thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't have gotten the pink one. Maybe I should have gotten the nude one. But holy moly, that is pretty. Okay, yeah, I'm not regretting this at all. Let me go grab the one I'm talking about from Rare Beauty. So actually I have three. I forgot I have the Pillow Talk highlighter from Charlotte Tilbury. So let me swatch these so you can see them in case you're in the same boat and you want, you're not sure if you want or if you need this pink highlight or not. Although it comes in other shades that are really, really pretty. Okay, so these are all three different shades of pink, which is very good to know. Okay, so this is Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury, the Pillow Talk Beauty Light Wand. Then this is Enchant from Rare Beauty, which is one of the liquid highlights. It looks like this. And then this is the Dior one in pink. But you can see the, they're all different shades of pink, believe it or not. The Pillow Talk is almost more of a rose gold. The Rare Beauty is, it's like a pale rose, I would say. It's not quite as pink as the Dior one. Hopefully you can see that, hopefully these swatches. Are helpful but okay the Dior on my skin okay okay I'm shocked I was thinking I might return this just to be honest because I didn't plan to be that impressed but I am impressed okay I wasn't gonna use this on top of that but we are because I just can't stand it so we're gonna try it I know you're not gonna be able to see it very well because you don't know what is this and what is the rare beauty or the Dior, but. Okay, so that is sparkling honey over the top. This shade in sparkling honey, I really, really like, cause it's not, it's, it's kind of pink, but it's kind of beigey too. It's like a pinky nude. Mm, this is going really well so far. I did not buy any new brow products or anything, so I'm going to go ahead and do my brows off camera, and then I'll come back and we will move on to the eyes. Now, we're going to use the shadows in this palette. I can't wait. And I have some other things, too, so I'll be back in just okay. a second. Let's move into eyes. We're gonna use this palette. I wanna use the shadows, obviously, but I do wanna put a little bit of the bronzers on my eyes as well, just to kind of see, because I would probably do that when I'm using this palette. So I just kind of dip my brush into all of them. 
like I did on my face. Beautiful. I mean, the formula on these powders, I wish she would release these like individually because I mean, this powder formula is phenomenal. She needs to, she needs to capitalize on this somehow and release these in some other way because these are too beautiful to just be in this one palette. Like, look at that. How pretty. Obviously we want to use the shadows. So I'm sure a lot of you have watched videos on this palette as have I. So you get five shadows in here and these shadows, they're so hard to describe. The formula is just so different. Like that's the everyday color, which I'm probably most excited about to be honest. It's this beautiful taupey bronze. They just feel so creamy and smooth and like a cream shadow almost, even though they're not. I mean, look at those two. So that's everyday and dreamy on my fingers. And then we have this deeper color, which is the statement shade, which is there. We have the soft color, which is the pink, which is right there. And then we have the casual color, which I'm not really sure why this dark shade is considered casual, but that is the casual color. So let me swatch these on my hand, but these, it was these shadows that really got me when I swatched them in store because I don't know, the formula on these is just beautiful. And this is meant to be more of a soft, like everyday kind of no makeup makeup palette. Sorry, I'm not the best at swatches, but there you go. All right, let's go ahead and apply. So I wanna use all of them, but I also want my makeup to look decent. So we'll use this again, obviously. I can't wait to use all the colors, but I really want to use this color down here. So this is the everyday shade and I'm pretty sure these are meant to be applied with your finger. So that is what I'm going to do first. And I'm just going to kind of tap this on the lid and bring it up just a little. <laughs> I just love that color. It's like the perfect bronzy one and done shadow. I mean, this is right up my alley. That's why I couldn't resist it because this is the kind of stuff that I love. Like I'm all about minimal natural makeup looks, one and done shadows. I That's just very much my style when it comes to makeup. So I'm just taking that same brush I used for the bronzers in the crease and just kind of blending, but honestly, you don't really need to blend. They applied beautifully. So I'm gonna try a brush with this. I know they're meant for fingers, but I wanna use this more as like a liner. So I'm gonna go into this color with the 204 from BK Beauty, and I'm gonna kind of just tap this on the lash line, but really mainly like on the outer half. So these are very soft looking shadows. So this is not the impact that you typically get from Natasha Denona, which I knew. And that's, that's why I was interested in this because this is a very soft, just easy kind of product. But I could see where, you know, if you're wanting like that high, high impact, this is not gonna give you that. But if you're like me and you like something more on the natural side. If you travel a lot, then this would really be something to look into. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a wing, a messy wing, obviously, but I really wanted to try this. And also, obviously, all of these shadows in here have that sheen to them. They're, none of them are flat mattes. They have a lot of that radiance to them so you have to kind of want that but I think these are beautiful I'm just taking that same 204 and 
I didn't get any additional product. I just kind of took what was left on my bottom lash line. And now I don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it because I really want to use it. This beautiful like topper shade, this one is called Dreamy. I don't need any more glitter here, but I mean, oh lordy. I mean, that is beautiful. <laughs> I don't know what to say other than that is absolutely beautiful. I was not sure about this purchase at first, but now I am very, very happy that I bought this. All right, I did not get a new mascara or eyeliner or anything, so I'm gonna do some mascara quickly off camera, but I do have one more thing I wanna show you, and obviously I didn't apply this today, but we will in the next video. I did get one more blush, and this is actually from Makeup Forever. It's the Artist Blush, and I got the shade Wherever Rose. The reason I got this was I saw in Julia Adams' Sephora recommendations video, she was recommending this shade. And we are a similar skin tone, so I did wanna try this. I have not tried the Makeup Forever powder blush formula, but this shade and this formula felt really, really good. So I decided to get it and try it out, but that is it there. So this is the shade B230 Wherever Rose. And I mean, this is silky smooth matte formula here. I also did swatch the powder bronzers from Makeup Forever, the new ones. I almost got one of those, but then I knew I was getting that palette and I knew I was getting the Tom Ford, so I didn't get it, but I'm still kind of thinking about it because they did feel really, really nice. The same formula as this powder blush. So I got that as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and do mascara and then I'll be back and everything else that I have are lip products that I'm really excited about. So I will be back. All right, I did my mascara and finally we're gonna finish up with some lip products that I cannot wait to try. So the first thing that I did get is one of the Freck lip liners. This is the Makeout Club Nude Muse lip liner. And I know several of you said that you love these and that they were kind of underrated. I feel like I haven't heard too many people talk about these. And I got the shade number four. And so these, they look like this. They're just kind of plastic twist up liners. But I loved this shade when I swatched it in store. I love lip liner. This is the shade number four. They feel very creamy. So we'll see if they last well. I was going to get another shade in Makeup by Mario, and I still might order one. I was thinking of getting Spiced Cinnamon. Is that the shade? He has a new one. Or Spiced Chai, maybe, is what it is. I was going to get that. I was gonna get the Hourglass lip liner, but I went with this because I really like this color and I've never tried these, so let's apply. Very creamy, very easy to apply. Um, they don't feel, they feel creamy, but not like to the point where it feels like it won't last. I like the color too. It's a little bit more brown than I was thinking. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more rosy, but I do like the color. I do like the color. We'll see what the lasting power is like on this. So that is the only lip liner I got, which that is an accomplishment for me because typically I go crazy with lip liners because I love them. All right, the last few products here. This was one of the things that I knew I wanted to get during the sale. Martina has been raving about these and I can see why. Once I saw them in person, I could see why. The new Westman Atelier Lip Suede Matte Lipsticks. Okay, I went to one Sephora first in the morning and they had Westman Atelier in this store, but for some reason they didn't have the lipstick display out. So I went to another Sephora just to get these because I was dying to try these. And when I finally saw them in person, they blew me away. The Martina was not kidding. This, first of all, they are the most beautiful lipsticks to look at. I mean, this really pretty kind of glossy nude packaging. They're magnetic, like all Westman Atelier products that look like this are. And then, I mean, the embossing on these lipsticks, the little heart with the Westman Atelier symbol. 
I mean, this is just, I don't even want to use it. It's so beautiful. And the formula on this, when I swatched these in store, I was like, oh my gosh. So I ended up getting two of them and I tried to talk myself out of one and to just get one, but I, I could not do it. So this is the shade Je Rêve, Je Rêve. So that is Je Rêve. That one's a little bit warmer, more of a rosy pink. And then I also got the shade Pique because I just, I could not pick between the two. So I got both. And I'm not even a lipstick person, but they, they got me with these. So that is Pique and that is Je Rêve, And that's the lip liner from Freck in the middle. These, they say they're a matte formula. They do not feel or look matte in the swatches. They feel very emollient and smoothing, very hydrating, like very, very hydrating. So I'm kind of curious why they call these matte. We're gonna do, I guess I'll just wipe them off and we'll try both. I'm gonna go in with Je Rêve first and we'll see. Okay, so there is Je Rêve. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty, you guys. I, and I'm not a lipstick person. I am a gloss person or a lip oil person. But these blew me away so much in store, I had to have them and I bought two. So that tells you something because I don't buy lipsticks that often. I'm not a huge, I don't know. That's just not typically my thing. But that is stunning. So pretty. I mean, I barely touch my lips and look at that pigment. And I mean, they do look matte. Like it looks matte, but it doesn't feel matte. It feels very hydrating. Very thin on the lips, not thick at all. We have to try this other one though because I'm just dying. So let me try to wipe this off. So these also act as like a lip stain, as you can see, because they don't, they didn't want to come off. So I think you could also, I've actually seen on Instagram, maybe YouTube, someone saying that they use this as like a stain and just kind of very lightly apply it, kind of blot it on their lips and then just wear it like that, kind of sheer. But okay, let's use PK. I like, actually, I'm actually glad that I got two of these now because the shades I got, they're both more neutral, obviously, but this one is cooler. This one's more warm. So now I have one of each, but these are stunning. Martina said it in her recommendations video. This is like a 911. Go out and buy these. She's right. I'm sorry to say because they're very expensive. I've never spent this much on a lipstick. I don't think. Actually, Tom Ford might be as expensive as these. These are $50. Yeah, $50. But you know what? I don't regret it. I don't regret it. Because this color formula packaging, 10 out of 10. All right, one final product. I know this is going to be a long video. I did get one of these. This is the House Labs PHD Hybrid Lip Glaze in the shade Macaron. Macaron. And this formula, this, these haven't been out for that long, but um, I swatched this color in store and I just loved it. It's a really pretty pink. And I've seen a lot of people really like this formula from House Labs. So I wanted to try it. And this is, this is much more of like a typical lip purchase for me. I'm very much into a lip oil like this. So that is the shade Macaron there has a little bit of a smell, but it's kind of like a fruity smell. I'm just gonna put this over the top. I know you probably wanna see it on its own, but my lips are gonna be stained from this lipstick now, so very thin. I was wondering if this is gonna be like a thicker formula or a thinner formula. No, they, they feel very thin, very, very thin. All right, that is everything that I bought for the Sephora savings event. I know this was probably a super long video, so I hope you enjoyed it. This was so much fun though. I mean, I've just been giddy all day because I knew I was gonna sit down and film this video and there's just nothing 
there's nothing as fun as trying a bunch of new things that you've been excited about. And I know I'm going to sound dramatic when I say this, but I think this might be one of my best hauls. I am truly not disappointed in anything that I bought. Nothing. I'm so excited about everything. Oh, I love it when that happens. It's so much fun to try new things, obviously, but it's fun when you actually really like the things that you bought. So let's go through everything real quickly. I will wear this makeup and let you know in the description box. First, the Summer Fridays SPF. I really like this so far. It applied beautifully underneath the Prada foundation. I love the finish. It's a little bit glowy, but not too glowy. It's kind of just right in between in terms of an SPF, which I like. The finish, the consistency is really thin. I like it. And with this foundation, it worked beautifully. So obviously I'll keep testing this and let you know, but I'm happy that I did buy this and try it out. The Prada foundation. What can I say? This did not disappoint me. You guys, this looks absolutely stunning. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not kidding. I think this is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The formula, the coverage, even the shade, it's light or it will be when I'm self tanned, but it's a pretty good match for my fair skin tone. So if you're around my skin tone, you don't have any color, you don't self tan. This is a pretty close shade match for me. But I mean, this looks beautiful. This did not disappoint me at all. And I'm so excited about it. I was afraid I was going to be kind of let down by this because I wanted to try it for so long. But no, 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 no. I love this. I like this so much right now. I'm honestly thinking about buying a darker shade. And I really, it's crazy to say that because I just applied it, but I like it that much. I honestly think this may be a new holy grail. I know it's a big claim. I'll let you know. I will keep you updated moving forward, but I am very, very impressed with that. The Fenty Concealer, I am also very impressed with. I love the color I chose, and I'm actually very impressed with the coverage. I thought the coverage was going to be less than it is, but I really like this. 200C is a good match for me. Unless you like something really brightening, then that is not a super brightening shade. But like I said, I like something closer to my skin tone. So I am very impressed with this. I mean, my under eyes look good. They look really good with that powder over the top. I'm really excited. I'm really excited about it. And again, I haven't worn these things all day yet, so obviously I don't know about the wear. But based on how they look right now, I'm very impressed. I'm also really excited about this powder. I love how this looks on my skin. I definitely see the blurring quality, but it doesn't look heavy or powdery. And I even like how it looks under my eyes. And like I said earlier, I am very, very very picky with powders under my eyes especially so I am really happy that I bought this so far so good obviously we didn't try the Tom Ford so we will try that in the next video this palette okay I swore I was not gonna buy this I swore I was not gonna buy this but you know what I think I made the right call on this I I think this is going to be the first face palette that I actually pull out and use. We will see, but I feel that this is going to be my go-to face palette now. I liked everything in here, the bronzer, the blush, the eyeshadows, these powders, the blush and bronzer, so incredibly smooth and silky, blurring, beautiful. I love these mixed together. I do agree with what everyone is saying that I don't think this is going to be universal. I don't think these colors would work for everyone, which makes me sad because this is a great palette. So maybe she will release another one. I really wish that she would with deeper shades maybe. I feel like these formulas are so good that she needs to do something else with these. So I am happy to say that I do not regret this. I don't. The highlighter... I am really shocked 
with that Dior highlight. Where is it? Where did I do it? Oh, right here, the new Forever Glow Maximizer. Like I said in the video, I thought, first of all, I tried not to buy this. I tried to put this back several times, but something was just drawing me to this product. So I bought it and I thought maybe I wasn't gonna like the shade, but I actually love the shade. It's different from my other pink highlights like you saw in the swatches earlier and it applies beautifully over a powdered face. And it doesn't, it doesn't look shimmery or glittery. There's no noticeable particles of glitter and shimmer in it, but it is absolutely, it's glowing, as you can see. So this, now I want another shade of this, and I did not think I was going to say that, but now I'm thinking maybe I should get a second one because I really like it that much. The powder highlight, beautiful, beautiful over the top. I would not put this over the top of that. Typically, unless you want a lot, a lot of glow, but these are something to look into from Sephora. They're 30% off during the sale. And I think this is a hidden gem in terms of a powder highlighter. I've only used it once, but this shade in Sparkling Honey, pretty. All right, what else did we use? The eyeshadows in the palette. I mean, I love, I love them, love them. They're soft though. So you have to want that softer, more muted, shadow. If you are a lover of very intense eye looks, this is not going to be for you. If you like a soft everyday one and done, I do think this is going to be for you. Um, or the shadows are at least. And the lip products. Again, not, I, I'm impressed with everything. I really like this liner so far from Freck. I want to see how it wears see how the lasting power is, and then the lipsticks. I will 100% agree with Martina Lilly on this. These, if you have any interest in these at all, I would say go ahead and get one. Go ahead and get one. I've seen some criticism online about the packaging, and I don't get it. I don't get it at all because I think this is the most beautiful lipstick I've ever seen. From the packaging, to the formula, to this embossing on the lipsticks. I mean, I don't think these could be any prettier. And they look beautiful on the lips. They're thin and creamy. They are matte, but they do have moisture. It's so hard to explain the formula, but it's they just glide on your lips. They're very pigmented. I don't regret this. And like I said, I am not a lipstick person, but I don't regret these at all. Not at all. In fact, I kind of want another one. Okay, and then this from House Labs. It's nice. I want to keep using it, obviously, on its own without the lipstick underneath, but I like the color. I like how it feels. Looks pretty over that lipstick. So I think that is everything. I know this is going to be a long video, so I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you picked up any of these things. Let me know your thoughts, what you did buy. I would love to know in the comments. So make sure to stay tuned. I will have all the other things in the next video. And of course, I will let you know my thoughts on these products in future videos. I will also leave any wear notes in the description box of this video as well. If you're new, I hope you'll stick around and subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair1. And I will see you guys next time for another video. Remember, simply be you.